<laughs> Clap your hands if you've been to New York, New York City. How many of you? You guys all clap if you went to the Museum of Modern Art, the MoMA. Everyone does that when they're there. I did that a couple weeks ago. I've been there my whole life. It was my first time there. And they have um, the painting, they have Starry Night by Van Gogh at the MoMA. And it's the most famous painting in the world. And I had no idea it was there. I went there and I just like accidentally stumbled upon it. That's how you know New York City has too much shit going on. <laughs> They don't just, they don't advertise it at all. They don't say, we have the most famous painting ever. You just go in and they're like, yeah, if you go to the bathroom, there's some swirly shit. <laughs> on a wall. It's a crazy experience seeing that in front of you. And it's, you can get really close to it. I was this close to Starry Night, and it's no glass around it. There's no protection. I thought that was weird, because when you go to Best Buy, they lock up their $20 headphones. <laughs> And here's a Van Gogh. Look at this close. I could touch it. I could real quick if I want to. <laughs> but I didn't do it. I didn't touch it. There's a person watching you the whole time in case you want to touch it. And he could tell I wanted to touch it. Because <laughs> I'm just looking at it. And he goes, don't touch it. <laughs> That's the most boring job I've ever Imagine, by the way, the museum security person, his whole entire day is watching people while they watch art. So I'm just here to... And he's just here to... And then there's his boss watching him through the camera. So... And then there's God watching all of us. <laughs> I made all those people. That's crazy. Right. So yeah, I, I I went I went to the museum alone. I I think that's the way to enjoy art. I prefer to go alone. And also, everyone I invited didn't want to come. <laughs> so, in the past, uh, I, I, I was in a relationship last year. We we. It was fun to have be in a relationship because then you can do that. That's like the go-to thing you do with a partner. Uh, and then, uh, but we broke up. We broke up last year. We uh, ended on good terms. She uh, she went back home to to uh, her grad school, and uh, you know I wish her the best. Uh, but I, but she did leave me, so uh, so not too well. <laughs> There's a selfish part of me that just wants to be the best part of a person's life. And uh, if uh, I'm not going to be a part of it, I want you to regret uh, not being with me. Is that weird? <laughs> like, I, I, you know, when she, I, I really told her, like, I support your decision you to go. You should really go and uh, pursue a better life. And secretly, I was like, I hope you don't achieve any of your dreams. <laughs> Inviting me to do this? How dare you? But uh, you know, I'm not crazy. I, you know, these are things you don't say out loud. They just, they, these are just things your heart feels. Your heart always wants to say these fucked up things, and then it gets to your brain, and you're luckily your brain's like, no, 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 we're not. Gonna do that. It's like a whole company that's going on here. Heart's this emotional boss who wants to say, just, uh, just put stuff out, you know? And this is the PR department. Okay. You said, you want to put what on Twitter? No, we're not, we're not doing that. I noticed this dialogue the first time it happened. We're at a, a restaurant, and I'm a pretty jealous person, you know? The waiter came and poured water for us, and she said something dirty. She was like, thank you. <laughs> Right? It's fucking crazy. <laughs> and then he said something back, he was like, you're welcome. <laughs> and my heart was like, why don't you two just fuck already? <laughs> Obviously there's some amazing chemistry that I can't compete with. And then that message went all the way up to the PR department. And they looked at it and were like, we're going to make a lot of revisions. <laughs> 
ratchet up something new and out of my mouth, I, you know, the chicken is delicious. We should come back here sometime. How was that? Sometimes, though, the PR department takes a day off. And that's when you say stuff like, uh, you really are like your mother. <laughs> and then it's not till the next day when the PR guy comes back in and goes, what the fuck did you do? You said, oh my god. Cancel all the appointments. We gotta deal with this. This is what we're doing. I'm alone now. I, uh, so I watch a lot of Netflix <laughs> by myself. I just watch everything. I've seen all of Netflix. From top to bottom. I just saw um, uh, Forrest Gump uh, for the first time. They have it on Netflix right now. Yeah, I know. What? Very recent. You, who clap if you've seen it? You've all seen it, right? That's good. If by chance you haven't seen it, uh, Forrest Gump is about a guy who is, uh, uh, <laughs> I don't know the word anymore. I'm really careful now. I don't want to say slow because the movie's about him being really fast. <laughs> okay. But I just saw it and it's freaking a great movie. But Netflix likes to do this thing after you finish a movie. They like to go, oh, you like this movie? Well, here's a movie just like that movie that you should watch. I finished watching Horror's Gump and Netflix goes, okay, would you like to watch uh, Rain Man? <laughs> and so I was like, all right, sure. And I watched Hello Rain Man, and uh, it's about a guy like that, also. <laughs> and he's at a casino. And then I finished that, and Netflix is like, all right, here's another one. This one is called I Am Sam. I watched all three of those movies. It wasn't until the end of the three movies where I realized these three movies are really not that alike at all. <laughs> one thing that these three movies have in common. It's the guy. But Netflix is like, oh, I know what you want to see. <laughs> we got a lot of these, come on. <laughs> and I think that's the only way they can present it. Because they can't do like categories. <laughs> they can't go, comedies, award-winning dramas. And, huh? Eh? <laughs> come on. Nervous about uh, what I can say now because it's it's a very sensitive time, you know. You got to be very careful, and I'm also trying to take advantage of it. <laughs> like now, when a girl sees me naked for the first time, I like to go, "Hey, what do you think? <laughs> Is it big, <laughs> or are you a racist?" <laughs> Turns out there are a lot of racists. <laughs> I, I do, uh, okay, I have a below average size penis. <laughs> All right, now get it out of your heads. And I'm fine with it. It's one of the stereotypes I know of my people. Um, at least I hope it's a stereotype. I hate to find out I'm the only one. <laughs> with my Asian homies, I'm like, hey, this small penis thing sucks, right? <laughs> like, what are you talking about? <laughs> well, I'm already long and thick. But I used to be very insecure. I'm, very, I'm confident about it now, I don't care. I go on dates now, I'll tell women, I don't care, by the time you're on a date with me, you've missed like 10 more flags. Anyways. <laughs> so, I'll say it, I, I, I say it as a joke. Uh, and women don't just like let you do that. They, they always want to pick you back up. You know, I'll say it and they'll be like, well, sometimes the smallest penises have the biggest hearts. <laughs> uh, I don't care. <laughs> I do, uh, I uh, masturbate every day. And here's how I do it. <laughs> 
grab my shaft, <laughs> and I move the skin up and down, and it feels good. <laughs> so I keep doing it. <laughs> and I keep doing it, and eventually it feels really, really, really good. And then pleasure builds at the base, and it like crawls to the head, and then I get a lot of pleasure on my head shaft together. And then come. And here's a noise I make when I <laughs> nothing. It's just very a lot of that's breathy. It's. That's it. That's it. And it smells like fish. Right. I have to see what you guys are willing to put up with. That's what that is. I don't feel comfortable.